Hello and welcome to our tween and teen fandom kit demo with the Public Library of Brookline. My name is Kayla and I'm a teen and tween librarian at the Brookline Village Library. I'm here today to show you how to make a paper mache Animal Crossing costume. Let's get started. Is this your first Public Library of Brookline to go program? Here's how it works. Each month, the library is offering new take-home program kits, complete with everything you need to follow along and video or written instructions created by one of your local librarians. The best part? Absolutely no due dates. You can keep everything included in your kit. Visit brklib.com slash to go for a full list of our current kit offerings and follow the link there or visit brklib.com slash eventbrite to reserve yours for free pickup at any library location. Now, let's get crafting. We're going to start off by showing you some of the materials that you're going to need to make this. So first we have a large balloon that you're going to blow up to be larger than your head for the head part of the costume, and two smaller balloons if you want to make the fists. We also have tissue paper that you can use for the hair, newspaper that you're going to cut into strips for the paper mache, some ribbon, a cup to mix the paste and water in for the paper mache, the various colors of paint to make your skin tone, a paintbrush for painting, some eyes, mouths, and noses so that you can choose how to design your face, and then you're also going to need to provide a couple of things yourself. That includes water, scissors, some colored pencils or markers to color in the facial features, string, tape, and that's it. So let's get started with step one, mixing the paste. So for this, I got a measuring cup so that I could measure out one part water to two parts paste. I started with a fourth cup, but you can use whatever measurement you want. You're gonna have two uh, containers of Elmer's glue pre-mixed in a cup, and then you'll take the water that you uh, have at home. First, you're gonna start with the one part water, measure that out, and pour it into your mixing cup, and then you can do that uh, with the glue, measuring out two parts of that. It's okay if it's a rough estimate. I mixed mine using the paintbrush, uh, because I wound up using the paintbrush to actually apply the strips as well, as you'll see here in a minute. But once that is fully mixed up and there's no weird globs, you're ready to start step two, building the head. So to start off, I planned which pieces of uh, the facial features I wanted to use. So here are the eyes, nose, and mouth that I selected. Then I took the balloon and I blew it up to be larger than my own head, hence why it doesn't fit fully on the screen. Uh, tied it off, and then you are ready to start uh, adding the paper mache strips. So take your newspaper and cut that into strips. It's okay if they're a little bit uh, shorter, that makes it a little easier to put them on. So then you're going to take your balloon, and the instructions say to dip the pieces in the paste, which you'll see here in a minute I started by doing, but I found that it was actually a little bit easier to paint them on so I took the paintbrush as you'll see here in a minute and just applied the paste directly to the strips by painting it on um, just to conserve a little bit of the the paste as I was applying the strips like so and then as you're applying the strips you're gonna want to uh, have it so that they're overlapping just a little bit so that you can't see any of the balloon underneath them just so that there's no sort of empty spots in your paper mache sort of cast. So then you're going to wait between an hour to two hours until all of the paste is totally dry so that you can apply three total layers of paper mache. And then this is just some footage of me applying the next layer of paper mache. As you can see, I continued overlaying the pieces so that uh, they were all overlapping just a little bit. 
and I made sure that the whole thing was totally dry so that as I was applying the new strips, I could tell where the new ones were based on whether or not they were wet. And then I just sort of trimmed them down with scissors if it seemed like they were getting to be too long. So then our next step is gonna be actually popping the balloon. You can see that I just cut the tail off so that the air could come out. The balloon itself didn't wind up curling in at all and I didn't feel the need to remove it. So if it's stuck inside the balloon, that's not a problem. So then for this next step, you're just gonna cut a little circle that you can fit your head through once you are finished painting everything. It took me a little while to actually get the hole to be the right size, so no worries if you have to fudge it a little bit in terms of cutting and then measuring and cutting and measuring a little bit. And like I said before, it's okay if the balloon is still attached. You don't necessarily want to try and pull that out or it could collapse your paper mache. Mine wound up sort of peeling off naturally and I removed it towards the end. So then we're moving on to step three, mixing your paint. So before I mixed the paint, I took a layer of white paint and covered all of the newsprint just to make sure that none of the text was showing through. It, this is especially important if you are making a lighter skin tone because you'll definitely be able to see the text through it. If you are doing a darker skin tone, like a dark brown, that's not really gonna be as much of a problem so you don't necessarily need to do that, but it's up to you. So then for the skin tone, you're going to start by mixing equal parts of the red, blue, and yellow. It's okay if at first it looks a little funny. Obviously, I had to mess with it a little bit to actually get to a, a neutral brown tone. Feel free to go wild in terms of mixing these until you have a nice shade of brown that you can start with. So then I was going for a lighter skin tone, so I used what was left of the white paint to slowly combine the white and the brown to sort of get that peachy shade. I also added a lot more pink because I have a slightly pinker skin tone, and that's why there was more red. So then we move on to step four, which is painting. And you're going to want to make sure that the white paint is fully dry before you apply the next layer of skin tone, otherwise it might mix together and make the skin tone a little bit too light. You're going to try and cover the entire paper mache in an even layer of paint. Just go over it as much as you possibly can so there are no spots poking through. If you do seem to be running out of paint, you can avoid some spots where you think you might put the eyes and mouth or where the hair might be just as a precaution, but you should have enough to hopefully cover the entire thing. Also, if you're mixing your skin tone and it looks a little bit darker than you want, that's okay. The paint tends to dry a little bit um, lighter than it looks when you're first mixing it together. Okay, so once that is all dry, uh, you get to start step five, which is adding the face. So here's my face that I already planned out. I decided to color my eyes this sort of blue-green color to match the blue hair that I have with the tissue paper. And you can use colored pencils, crayons, markers, whatever you have laying around the house is fine. I also wound up choosing this orange shade for the nose just based on the fact that um, Animal Crossing characters have that orangey nose regardless of their skin tone. And then once you've got those, you're just going to glue them on using the paper mache paste that you might have left over so you can just cover it in paste and then apply those um, to the center of the face like I did here. I did mark it out before I did this. I just used a little pencil and put X's where I wanted to um, paint on the glue. So then we're going to cut the pupils out of the eyes so that when you are looking through you can see but be careful with this step because obviously an exacto knife or a uh, pair of scissors is definitely going to be sharp i had kind of a hard time with this step so if it seems like you need an adult to help you out that's perfectly fine but anyway so i was able to get the pupils out using scissors and then i sort of cleaned up the holes a little bit using a box cutter as you can see here and some scissors because why not 
For this step, uh, you're going to put the ribbon inside so that you have something to sort of pin to your hair when you're wearing the head. So I marked it out using the pencil and then cut these little uh, slits where you can put the, the ribbon through. So you're going to um, put it through the top here so that it's got sort of a little outside bit and you're going to wind up covering that up with the hair so it's obviously fine if it's showing and then on the inside you can just tie it in a little bow so that you can clip it to your hair. We're going to do the final step which is cutting out and applying the hair. So I took the blue tissue paper and cut it into various strips because I was going for a slightly longer haircut. Uh, it's okay if they're a little uneven, so is hair. That's just how it goes sometimes. So then I started laying it out, sort of planning what I wanted to do, and then I used the paper mache paste that was still left over to uh, start gluing the hair on. At first I sort of just tried to cover the head with a, a general layer of hair so that none was peeking through. You'll see later I sort of um, made a faux scalp almost, where there was just a little bit of glue in the center. Um, but you can do whatever hairstyle you want here. So if you wanted to do like a mohawk or if you wanted to do really long hair, you've got total freedom. It's just a matter of how you cut your strips and how you apply them. So go crazy. As you can see, I just made sure to try and layer mine so that there wasn't any skin poking through. If it seems really long right now, that's okay. If you want to, after you've already applied the strips of tissue paper, you can also trim the hair into a shorter style. So this is the scalp part that I was talking about, where I just sort of tried to glue all of it to one sort of section there. Make sure that you have the whole head covered with a first layer of hair before you start adding more. That way, again, there's no funky little bald spots poking through. Once you've got all of your hair ready, you can sort of style it in whatever way you want. So you can add some little bangs in the front if you want. I wound up actually taking these off after I was finished because I didn't like the way that they looked. Um, but feel free to experiment with whatever hairstyle you feel like fits your, your character best. Okay, and so then here is the final result. I wound up taking the bangs off and instead uh, gave my head little pigtails with some of the extra ribbon that I had. Then you can just slip it on over your head and look out through the slits in the uh, pupils and you're ready to wear it around and do whatever you want with it. Thank you so much for celebrating your fandom with us today. We would love to see what you make with your kit. So feel free to share your project with us on social media using the hashtag brklib to go the tween and teen kit program is generously sponsored by the Friends of the Brookline Public Library and the Brookline Library Foundation. Thanks. Happy crafting. Bye. Mark your calendar for Monday, April 12th at 7 p.m. to reserve next month's kits. Our April Stressless kit will be glitter jars, and our April Fandom kit will be an Avatar The Last Airbender style bending prop.